incredibly proud of your enormous achievements in the last few weeks, and you should just enjoy it, take it, and now begin a journey. That's a whole new journey in the next few weeks of taking the show to the whole new level than it can be. Thank you so much for everything. Thank, Thank you. Woo! We're at a facility called LH2, which is a sort of sound place where we can do a proper tech of the show. And at this stage now, we're about a week away from performing at the O2, so we add the lights, the sound, the band. A couple of bottles of water. Always, yes, lovely. What sticks do you want? I'll have some five Bs, please, Matt. And all the elements that make the show the great show that we hope it will be. Ladies and gentlemen, can you pack away your tents? We're going to go from the interval, please. Setting your tennis from the top of Act Two. We've allowed Lawrence, our director, completely free reign to create a totally contemporary Jesus Christ superstar. And whether it's too contemporary, I don't know yet. But of course, we're very early days. It's not yet lit properly. We're only about 40% there. But uh, it's amazing how quickly these things come together. And from what I'm seeing at the moment, it looks very exciting. The biggest challenge we've probably got in a way is the staging of the drama. And um, that's where I suppose this is a bit different to any other kind of rock tour because it is a musical theatre staging but within an arena context. But the tough economy is pushing people to the brink. <laughs> the question remains, are their voices being heard? The concept arose in conversations with Andrew before Christmas when we were trying to figure out how to do the thing in an arena. And the conversations were a lot about the Occupy London movement, the recent Arab Spring, the fact that in a way you could totally take Tim Rice's lyric and read it as a late 20th, early 21st century essay on the relationship between people in power and the crowd. I then tried to find a symbol, kind of architectural symbol, that could become the stage and that would communicate two worlds, the world of the establishment and the world of the crowd. And the thing about the establishments is that people in power always build stairs, they build pyramids, they build things that lift them up so that they can always portray themselves at the top of something with all the peasants down at the bottom. To put a man to death we need him crucified, it's all you have to do. The images of the, of the protesting young people um, against power and the symbol that we could make architecturally really just became then the form of the show. It was Lawrence's idea to bring the cross in from the grid so that it was part of the architecture of the stage and it fit well with my image of the tr arc of the show being from darkness to light from the crowd being in the desert camping being in Gethsemane the Last Supper all those dark scenes punctuated increasingly frequently with these very strong brightly lit scenes of the establishment so that in the end you get to the moment where Jesus is on the cross and he steals the light of the establishment and takes it for himself and gives it to the world, which is the great Christian metaphor. So, Patrick, when you come up, will you start that on blue and then go to this kind of steely green yes. on... Yes, as, great. as he gets there and takes his position. Perfect. Well, Patrick Woodruff and I have worked together three times now, and he's just amazing at this stuff. He, he understands the size and the scale of it, and yet he understands the sort of artistry and the sort of delicate stuff that needs putting together. Unlike a theatre show, everything is on view here. You know, you see the lights, you see the trusses, that's part of our vernacular. And that tells people this is a concert, this is a rock concert as well as a theatrical experience. 
the interesting things about this hybrid shows are you, you don't have the specifics of a stage set. So in, in this version of the show, we have a big screen that tells us where we are, and then we have to suggest that with lighting. And we have to suggest not just where the scene is, but the dynamics. The crucifixion is a really good example. You know, you can do a dramatic crucifixion in an arena because you take every one of your 120 lights and it's this majestic, huge statement. But more difficult to make a delicate moment where in the theatre you would have a little back three-quarter light and a soft dapple on somebody's face and a little bit of light in the backdrop and you've told the story. You do that in the O2, it just looks rather weedy. So in a way that's the, the, the challenge in these things, is the dynamics between the big spectacle and the small poignant moments. Okay, sorry Ben, we're really not going to just leave you up here. So, the other okay. big challenge, of course, is the sound, because um, obviously to tame any one of these big arenas is uh, uh, very important, because clearly the words are very important in this. Well, this is the first time we've actually put the band and the singers together. We know how the bands sound, we know how the, the singers sound, but when you put them together and you see the whole production, it starts to make sense. What we're doing today with testing various different types of microphones. The big thing for us was microphone headset choice. On a theatre production, the room sounds lovely. And in an arena, the back wall's a long way away. And the distance for the sound to travel to that back wall and then return means that you have to monitor people Get differently. Get out for the lads. <laughs> T-shirt, please. T-shirt. What's the bus? Tell me what's happening. What's the bus? Tell me what's happening. What's the bus? Tell me what's happening. What's the bus? How are you doing, Seamus? I'm good. Can I have a, uh, can I have a shout, please? Yeah! Yes. Well, no, I think well. you have to tweak me. I'm a small that's a lot of, but... That's a lot of voice for a small lady. <laughs> <laughs> Vocally, I think Jesus Christ Superstar as a musical is probably one of the hardest challenges for any cast. It's a rock opera, which means we've got to be rocky, we've got to sound a little bit raw in moments, we've got to make it sound emotional and, you know, a little bit less placed. And that almost, in a way, requires more technique. Then I was inspired. Now I'm sad. I think Gethsemane really uh, is probably one of the hardest personal moments, um, just because everything's in play there. Um, I'm thinking about so much. I'm actually having a conversation with God, you know, a, a conversation that actually happened between Jesus and God would probably be one of the most important conversations ever to have happened, and I've got to make that relevant to the audience. I've got to make them believe it. It was important for me and Lawrence um, that I found a new way to explore that song and a new way to look at it. With Andrew Lloyd Webber's work, there's no spoken dialogue. All of the acting is through song. And I thought, yeah, I can do that. I can tell a story when I'm singing and working with our great director and associate director, Nick, it really, you know, has brought home to me how difficult that is, because as a singer, I think you're very much concerned with the sound, making a very beautiful sound. But what's so important in this piece, and a lot of Angelo Dove's work, is that you have to get your emotion across, no matter what melody you're singing. And it's a, it's a big challenge, and it's a big learning curve for me. It seems to me a strange thing Mystifying That a man like you Should waste his time On the women of her kind Although I've wanted to play this for years and years yes, I, I was incredibly nervous about 
my voice because it is right at the top of anyone's range really but certainly mine so I'm really looking forward to it. It's great fun having sort of license to sing that high rocky range I've always enjoyed doing but always been wary of but these singing coaches have gone that's fine just breathe do it and it's been great it's been like being let off the leash a bit. I know you can't hear me but I only did what you wanted me to Christ I'd sell out the nation for I have been saddled with the murder of you I have been it's important that we have sympathy for Judas that's vital to the piece so that we're torn. He genuinely cares about this movement. He and Jesus were the leaders of a movement who were dedicated to love and equality and helping the poor and stuff. We need to believe that we love each other despite the fact that our relationship is breaking completely. <laughs> If you are the Christ, yes, the great Jesus Christ, feed my household with this bread. You can do it on your head, or has something gone wrong? Why do you take And then we can always, we can always... And then that Friday day. Friday day. Friday day and night. How did I get the role of Herod? I was asked by Andrew Lloyd Webber. And then Ben uh, Forster said, I don't want him to do it. I'm not a fan of Chris Moyles. I don't want him to do it. And then my phone went. Oh, and Fern texts him. And then Fern just Cotton texts me. And then Melody C is singing next door. Chris. Basically, I got the role because I'm so ultra showbiz. Chris. Good luck, Chris. <laughs> so I'm working with incredible, talented people. And uh, to make me feel even more confident on stage every night, I have to wear this, which is a crushed red velvet suit. And it has trousers to match and a red tie. And I have this hair. So, who's the lucky boy? Good night. Thank you, Manchester. Thank you, Carlisle. Thank you. Very lovely there in the middle of the stage. We were thinking about a sort of choreographic style for the show, uh, and we wanted to sort of bring something from the street onto the to the stage, and and with the dynamic of sort of the idea of riots and you know fire bombs and all sorts going off, it, it seemed to work well that we could use parkour as a kind of energised, acrobatic way of doing all of that stuff. We've also used social media as a sort of uh, as from what's the buzz. We we use the whole Twitter feeds and the whole way of using. Um, these social media sites in order to get messages out. I mean, that's the idea of, you know, originally Christ sending his message out through word of mouth. Now you can simply just go on your iPhone and send that out immediately. We, um, I sort of wanted to explore that a little bit. Like this. We're doing right, left, double. It's an left, enormous right, show double. to stage. There's 49 people in the cast. And I'm responsible for making sure that every single person's in the right place at the right time, on the right line, in the right lighting queue. Some of the wardrobe can be quite restrictive, so I have to work quite closely with them to make sure that with the choreography that I set, that the cast are able to, to carry out that choreography in the shoes they're wearing, especially again with the staircase, the heels that the girls wear. And we're going to have to be ultra prepared for a couple of the changes, namely Superstar, because we have the girls in quite intricate costumes. And also it's the, it's the show piece. Superstar in particular is our big kind of fantasy element within the show. Um, the girls are wearing these laced up corsets, which they find very hard to breathe in. And on top of that, I'm asking them to walk up and down this staircase like a stairmaster, repeat rapidly over and over again. Okay, can you do that again, please? I'm sorry, this is a bit wrong. It's very full on. If they don't burn pounds and get a good cardio work at the end of this show, I don't know how else they will.
We've had also input from the cast to see what they can move in well. Obviously, we've got some parkour performers as well as dancers, so we need to know their needs also. It's so different from any other Jesus Christ Superstar production in the past. Pilot, we wanted to look like a high court judge. We didn't want him in robes, but he is going to be wearing Judge's wig. He's got the bands, so yes, he's recognisable as a high court judge, but it's our take on that. Elastic, uh, probably more uh, elastic on, on the base coat. It's an alternative to robes. You know, it's a high quality. I can't wait to see you. I know, I know. My dad always says it's finally a proper job. <laughs> <laughs> The director, Lawrence, was very keen to show off Mel's tattoos because we wanted to incorporate those in the character and they do, once again, lend themselves to it perfectly. The first one I got was, um, it's like a little Celtic band. My favourites are these here on my wrists and this is love and happiness in Tibetan. And that's just a little scarf from when I fell over and sprained my ankle on opening night. <laughs> and my cross, which is kind of very poignant in this particular show. She's developed probably a hard shell to protect herself against the world. But when she peels away the layers, you see a softer side to Mary. And you see, if she was allowed to, how she'd like to feel. I've been really lucky with my costume and makeup. It's really cool. I have dreadlocks, which I was a little bit nervous about at first. And also my makeup, actually, it's quite harsh, a lot harder than I would personally wear. But it's, it's Mary's armour, you know, it's very important for her role that she, she has this, this war paint that she puts on. And it makes me look very different, which makes me feel different and it helps me to become the person that Mary is. The elements were modern day, kids off the street, um, edgy, um, a bit grungy. Some of the guys have got dreads in their hair and it just adds an extra texture and flavour. That's definitely mine now. Yes, that's yours. <laughs> I'm totally in awe of my lady who's working with me, Emily Dowd, who is, is a theatre author. She's, she's trained in that industry, so I'm learning a lot from her as well. She's talking to me about fake blood and prosthetics. So we were there with products and powders and straighteners and all sorts. We just wanted Ben to feel like he could sort of melt into the part. We sort of went for Johnny Depp when we were thinking of Jesus. Hey, get that done, yeah, please. <sighs> we really didn't want him to be the normal Jesus in a, you know, his, his loincloth and his floating gowns. And although he's got the longer hair, it's grown out, it's a bit, it's a bit rockier. It's just so heavy. The show on a whole is such a heavy experience. Um, even after our first run through, I kind of came back into the rehearsal room off the stage and I was just sitting down and Chris Moyles looked at me and said, you all right? And I said, <laughs> it's, like, it's just so emotional, you know, it's, a, it's an amazing experience. Only a day ago, we were, we were in a, a space right across London uh, where we had our entire kit and set set up. And then to sort of move to the O2 two days later and just see them push that whole thing together. And I, I arrived just in time to see them roll the deck from one side of the O2 to the other and see, see the way that they sort of join those pieces together. It's, it's quite incredible. So they're an amazing, it's an amazing team. How they do all of that is beyond me, but it's, it's ex certainly exciting. Jesus Christ Superstar was the first musical that I really discovered for myself. What I've enjoyed most about it has been the creative process, finding a new way to tell an old story. Jesse, it's such a, an unusual piece of musical theatre, I think. You can afford to push the boundaries with it, as long as you stay focused on the human drama that's in the middle of it. And that's the whole point about this piece, is what in our minds culturally sits as a sort of mystical ancient idea of this son of God and this bad person and these disciples but Jesus Christ Superstar just goes no they're people and they have relationships and so the more contemporary it is in many ways the more it shines a light on the fact that you're humanizing and secularizing a mystical story. To work with someone like Lawrence who just knows exactly what he wants it just feels like a it's like a gift. One big company bow. Amazing. Taken off melt. Taken off melt. Because it, they will go crazy, and I think it's let have a moment. There is something amazing about this company. I've never, I've never quite experienced the love um, 
that I have with this particular company. The tip of the tongue, the top of the teeth. Hi guys, we're backstage at Jesus Christ Superstar, about to do the number. Have we got an evening of triumph for you? We've got two types of hairspray here as well. We've got one normal strength and one strong. Because this hair decides to do extra special things during the show. My voice is ridiculously low tonight, so with any luck I'll hit the notes. <laughs> Red leather, yellow leather. I'd like to think it will have another life. I'd like to think that it will be performed again. Um, I'd like to think that this company will get to perform it again. You know, what's been amazing about it is that it, it feels like we've broken a different ground. Even though I've performed, I've put together a concert format show before, this one is, is different in the sense that we have created a style of theatre to move and tour. Um, to play in different venues around the world. Um, and it, it, we've kind of molded uh, the idea of an arena rock star touring uh, to theatre touring, and, and we've kind of created this hybrid. And the development of that idea and the journey behind it has been remarkable. I'd like it to stay as it is. I'd like to remember it um, as being the most amazing job that I've ever done and the amazing amount of people incredible talented people I've ever worked with. And yeah, I, I think it's just been some, some of my happiest days of work. Me 42 years, this is the superstars I've always, always hoped it would be in an arena, in a rock band. And thank you very, very much, all of you.